Good evening, brothers in Christ. The story after Jesus died on the cross is the story of the burial of Jesus, which is recorded in the Gospel of John chapter 19, verses 31 to 42. Let's pray together. Dear gracious and loving Father, we thank you for the death and burial of Jesus, which prepare us to rejoice in the glorious resurrection of Jesus. Please show us the profound truth of your word, so that the truth may take root in our hearts and be manifested through the way we live our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the previous few lessons, we have seen the important events of Jesus that became more and more intense from the arrest, the trials, the intense suffering, until his death at the cross. His sacrifice as a ransom made us deeply grateful for his love. Today is a good opportunity for us to take a break while things calm down and reflect on Jesus' great sacrifice before we celebrate his resurrection together in the next lesson. Today's lesson is divided into two parts. Part 1, Fulfilled Prophecy in Jesus' Death and Part 2, Fulfilled Prophecy in Jesus' Burial. The key message is, Jesus' death and burial help us believe in his resurrection. Part 1. Fulfilled prophecy in his death. The first section is physical evidence. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the body taken down. Even though the Jews had just called for the death of an innocent man, they remained very strict about the Sabbath and did not want the bodies to remain on the crosses on the holy day. This is because Deuteronomy 21 states that anyone hung on a pole was under God's curse and must be buried the same day to avoid desecrating the land. They therefore decided to hasten the death of the crucified prisoners by breaking their legs. The actions of the Jews showed that, outwardly, they were keeping the law, but inwardly they failed to see the Messiah and missed the heart of God's law. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. Roman soldiers usually allowed prisoners to hang on crosses until they died. This could sometimes take several days, and the dead bodies were left hanging until the birds picked the flesh off of them. But because the Jews wanted to hasten the process, the soldiers came and broke their legs. When a prisoner's legs were broken, he would not be able to put the body up and opened the chest cavity so that they could gasp the air. They would quickly die from suffocation, blood loss, and shock. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Jesus died in excruciating suffering. He gave his life as the perfect sacrifice to bear the wrath we deserve all of which is according to God's plan. In addition, events that took place during his death also fulfilled the symbolism of the Passover lamb. Firstly, 
the crucifixion took place on the day of preparation for the Passover Sabbath. Secondly, Jesus was perfect like the Passover lamb. Thirdly, his bones were not broken in accordance with the regulations for the Passover lamb. And lastly, his blood protects us from God's judgment, just as the blood of the Passover lamb protected the Israelites from judgment in Egypt. Jesus is the perfect lamb of God. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The piercing of Jesus' side means two things to us. Firstly, it is the fulfillment of the prophecy in Zechariah which says, They will look on me, the one they have pierced. Secondly, the piercing of Jesus' side confirms that Jesus truly died because suffocation caused myocardial ischemia and heart failure, resulting in fluid build up in the lungs and plural spaces. For this reason, when a soldier pierced Jesus' side, the water that had accumulated came out along with his blood. Jesus was a real man. He really died and his death confirmed his resurrection, for the resurrection could not take place without death. The second section is spiritual evidence. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. The Apostle John testified that he was an eyewitness who had recorded the truth. His objective was for the reader to believe the truth. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. The fulfillment of the prophecies in Exodus 12, Numbers 9, Psalm 34, and Zechariah 12 is significant because it clearly confirms that the word of God is true. The word of God is God's expression through human writing to reveal his person, his plan to redeem mankind, and what will happen in the future. Because God deeply cares for us, he reveals the truth to us. This includes the truth about man's fall. If we believe in the truth about humanity and accept that we truly need him, we will have the freedom to approach him without shame, to be forgiven, to be cared for, to be changed, and to gain a new perspective with a new world view. Principle 1. God's fulfilled word about Jesus' death reveals spiritual truth. What truth about Jesus' death are you struggling to believe? Are you stumbling by his human death? Since he is God, do you wonder why he allowed these things to happen? Since the fall of Adam and Eve in Genesis 3, our humans have inherited the fallen sinful nature. Human nature has become distorted from the way God created it in the first place. Holiness does not come naturally, but sin does. And because of this sinful nature, every human is going to face the judgment of a perfect and holy God. However, nothing can stand in the way of God's ultimate plan. 
Jesus was willing to be crucified as a sacrifice, which is exactly in accordance with God's prophecy and plan for redemption for mankind. As a result, those who trust in Jesus can receive forgiveness of their sins and receive new life in Him. How does knowing that Jesus' death fulfilled God's prophecy and plan to redeem mankind give you the confidence to trust that Jesus was the one who he claimed to be? How can you express your appreciation for Jesus who died to save you from God's wrath? Part 2 Fulfilled Prophecy in Jesus' Burial The first section is the royal burial. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. The Gospel of Luke chapter 23 explains, Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. This passage in the Gospel of John describes Joseph as a secret disciple of Jesus, similar to Nicodemus, because he feared the Jews, which conveys the risks of following Jesus at that time. The fact that Joseph was allowed to take Jesus' body indicates that he had a certain level of influence. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 35 kilograms. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. Jewish burial customs involved washing the body and covering it in cloth and spices or aromatic oils. Joseph and Nicodemus used copious amounts of incense to prepare the body, which conveys their tender care for Jesus. Their actions likely brought their secret beliefs to light because they labored with love. Even though they faced a high risk of losing positions, losing reputations, and becoming unclean before Passover by touching a dead body, they did these things because they believed that Jesus is the Messiah, and what they did would be remembered forever. The second section is the fulfillment of prophecy. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Because the Sabbath began at sunset on the day of preparation, Joseph and Nicodemus rushed to finish the process before sunset, so they placed the body in a new tomb in Joseph's private garden. This tomb had been cut out of the rock. This event represents Joseph's sacrifice and reflects God's preparation for Jesus' burial. Everything was fulfilled according to the prophecy in the book of Psalms, because you will not let your faithful one see decay. 
and also according to the prophecy in the book of Isaiah, he was with the rich in his death. Jesus' death set the stage for his resurrection, since there is no resurrection without death. And in Jesus' burial, he identified himself with believers, so that when he rose from the dead, we would also live with him, as Romans says. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. Principle 2. God's fulfilled word about Jesus' burial reveals God's care. What truth in today's passage encourages you to express your faith? Do you dare to take risks to express your love for God? Do you trust that He will take care of you when you take risks for Him? Our God is faithful and trustworthy. He cares for us even in death and burial. He sees our fallen nature our brokenness and our messiness. Nevertheless, he wants us to know that he loves us so much that he died for us. He wants us to trust that he is everything we need to become who he has called us to be. And he wants us to be confident that we can trust him with all our heart. How does knowing that God cares for you, and you can trust in God's care, help you to be confident in living your life to follow God. How does the preciousness of Jesus permeate your thoughts, actions, and worship? Jesus' body was pierced by the soldier and was buried by two secret believers. The key message is, Jesus' death and burial help us believe in his resurrection. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we praise you for you are faithful and trustworthy. We thank you for the precious truths we have learned together today about Jesus' death and burial. May our every thought, every action, and every worship Give glory to Jesus. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Peace of God be with you all. สวัสดีครับ